Hi, um, my name is Mr. Warwick and I'm a consultant cardiac surgeon here at the Royal Stoke University Hospital. So a coronary artery bypass graft is a surgical procedure um, which aims to improve the blood flow to your heart. Most people have surgery, bypass surgery, because they normally present with symptoms of chest tightness, angina, and they go along the process of investigations and the ultimate investigation is an angiogram, which is a dye test that will um, look at the blood flow to your heart. If it transpires that the blood flow to your heart is impaired or narrowed, then there are one of a, two, a couple of options left. One, it, you can treat with medication. For some narrowings, stents can be put in, but if there are more than one vessel that is involved, then bypass surgery is the best option. And as the name implies, it, we bypass the, the problem. So we take some arteries and some veins and attach it beyond the narrowing, thereby improving the blood flow to your heart and hopefully improving your symptoms. Well, the reason why you're contemplating a bypass is, is simply because you've presented with symptoms of chest tightness, angina. You may have angina um, because when you exert yourself, you get this tightness or you may have come into hospital because you've had a heart attack and, and tests have demonstrated that you have these narrowings there. So as a, if more than one vessel is involved, then generally the best option is to consider an operation and that is a bypass operation. The best analogy that you sort of give most people is that think of your blood vessels to your heart as a motorway. And if there was an accident, most people dive or go around the problem on the motorway and attach it further on down the line. And that in essence is what a bypass is. We bypass the narrowings in the blood flow to your heart, thereby improving it afterwards and hopefully improving your symptoms. So there are two ways that it can be done. One is with your heart beating and one is by stopping your heart and both have advantages and disadvantages. What we all of us do, what you all have, are what's called grafts, bypass grafts. And generally we use an artery that runs uh, on either side of your breastbone, sometimes one or both of them, and sometimes a vein from your leg or the artery in your arm. And so those are what we use to do the bypass grafts. How we do it, as I said, is one of two ways, either with your heart beating or by stopping your heart when you have to go on what's called a heart-lung machine in order for us to do that. Your heart, in essence, has four valves. The two most common valves that we operate on are your aortic valve and your mitral valve. Your aortic valve sits at the top of your heart for want of a better place. Uh, and it's the valve that every time your heart pumps blood, blood should go through this valve into a big vessel called your aorta. And all that blood should go around your body. Once this valve becomes diseased, uh, you then start to pr have symptoms. For most people, it is generally a progression in breathlessness. For other people, it is palpitations or collapsing. When you do present with these symptoms, you get tests, generally an echocardiogram, which is a scan of your heart that will show us if that disease is there. And if it's come to the point that it's deemed significant, then one would consider an operation. For other people, it may not necessarily be narrow, but it may be leaking. And once again, you present with symptoms of progressive breathlessness or heart failure. And then if tests deem it necessary, then that valve is repaired or replaced. Now the other most common valve that we operate on is your mitral valve, which sits between two chambers of your heart on the left side of your heart. And once again, that valve can either be very tight, so not enough blood is going through it, or leaking, so too much blood is going through it into a chamber of your heart. And you get symptoms related to that, which are basically predominantly breathlessness. And depending what 
the pathology of that valve is will determine how it is treated, whether or not it is repaired or whether or not it is replaced. For most mitral valve problems, they are generally we aim to try and repair them rather than replace them because generally the pathology means that you can do that. For the aortic valve, the general problem is, is you have to replace it. And, and that's what, what we do. Now there are two types of valve that we use, a mechanical and a tissue valve, and both have advantages and disadvantages. So predominantly in, in this institute, you have to replace these valves with an open heart. Uh, so you have to approach them by opening your breastbone, okay? In some places, um, they are done uh, by a different approach, either from the right side of your chest or making smaller incisions. Mm -hmm.